What's happening everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy and Merry Christmas or Merry Christmas Eve but you know Merry Christmas because also I'm not going to be doing a video on Christmas Day. Maybe if Jaden Sancho is pictured at Cobham secretly signing. Anyway welcome back to the channel and welcome to a transfer news video, kind of a general Chelsea news video. Today I'm going to be talking about the truth about Timo Werner's release clause and obviously there's been conflicting reports on how much the young German will cost any European football club. I'm going to be talking about two significant exits and a couple of positives at the end. But before I do get into today's content, a reminder to you, the viewer, to please do subscribe to Football Therapy if you have not yet done so. Click the sub button, you click the bell notifications icon, because that's important, remember? And also, why not like the video, do us a favor, let's get into the video. Right, let's start with exits and why they make sense. Olivier Giroud recently interviewed said, yes, I think there will be a change in January. Shock horror, we kind of knew. Giroud does look our favor in Chelsea's squad. He doesn't, even though if he's appreciated as a good senior professional, which I believe he has been doing like, or certainly been behaving like a professional, training hard, always being available for Frank Lampard, but of course, that is in the Frenchman's interest, as he wants a good move in January, somewhere where he can play at a decent enough level, so he can still lead the line for France in the upcoming Euros next summer. In this interview, Giroud pretty much echoes that sentiment. He says, look, I'm playing in the summer for France. This is the last time I can really probably play for France. Dude's like 33 going on 34 or something. And Didier Deschamps will still pick him as a striker. So he needs to be playing football the final six months, expressing himself on the pitch. And he pretty much says all that. He's been linked to a bunch of clubs. He said he wants to go to MLS eventually, but he won't in January. He's been linked to Atletico Madrid, which would be a huge move for him. Also into Milan, maybe to rotate with Lukaku. I know they play a two striker system, so he might see himself having more chances but with Lotaro and Lukaku I think it'll be difficult for him to get loads of chances maybe he'll get more Atletico a couple of French clubs and even some clubs in the Premier League such as West Ham and uh, Crystal Palace a report of him being perhaps included in a part of a Wilfred Zaha swap deal don't know how much truth there is in that but the point is the Frenchman the World Cup winner will have options right another really Notable exit would be Marcus Alonso this January. Now, this one makes sense for the player so, so much as well. Obviously, he's won a Premier League at Chelsea. He's won an FA Cup. He's won a Europa League. Sure, he's been out of favour as the first choice ever since Chelsea went to a four-back system. Or if you remember when Sarri first came in, he said Alonso could be the best left-back in Europe. Anyway, Emerson took his place. Aspilicueta since has been rotating on the left and Alonso is a third choice left back in a team that really only has two left backs. So Inter Milan won him. Antonio Conte, former Chelsea boss who won the Premier League with Alonso, is playing that same system over in Italy and he wants Marcus Alonso. Chelsea have slapped a price tag on Alonso of 40 million euros. Pretty decent, huh? It means they make a profit on him uh, since they bought him and they've had him for a few years. He's a, you know, he, he's a good goal scoring left wing back. And even though he was a great all round left wing back for Chelsea a few years ago, now, even though he had a generally good game against Tottenham, the pace of it might be catching up with him a little bit. Inter is perfect. He knows Conte, he knows the system backwards, he's played in Italy before, and Inter are on to win the Scudetto, their top of Serie A this, uh, this season. I mean, it's not a given because they're in a title race with Juventus, but they're looking very, very comfortable. And if, if Conte scraps the Europa League early doors um, and just puts the kids out and gets knocked out, no European football, it's perfect for Antonio Conte to win a domestic league. Marcus Alonso comes in, plays for half a season, wins another league title in his career. It makes perfect sense for everyone. Plus, Chelsea can get a decent return on him. Obviously, a lot of this would come down to cover at left back because Chelsea have just come off the end of a really impressive performance and win against Tottenham Hotspur. But that was playing a 3-4-3. Free -free. And that was, the, you know, that was the Frank Lampard masterclass putting that particular system up against Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. Lampard will maintain that he wants that option going forwards. Sure, he can play Rhys James or Azpilicueta right back or right wing back, I mean, but a left wing back, is Emerson the man? I'm not so sure. So regardless to what anyone says, Lampard will see value in Marcus Alonso just even to play this position every now and again or to have him on the bench 
as his second left back if Emerson or you know as Plaquette is injured or can't play it's a full back option that he will need so what did Chelsea do do they say look I think we can give you someone better here so let's sell Alonso for 40 million euros this January he'll be really happy we'll have some money we'll have a little bit on top and you can use some of that war chest and get a superb left back whether that is Ben Chilwell or not they can get a starting left back and then Emerson can rotate in and out and who knows, move forwards from there. Right then, Chelsea and Timo Werner have been linked for weeks now. Timo Werner is the hottest striker or the hottest property in, in the sense of forward form in Europe right now. He's 23 years old, he's got so, so many goals, he gets assists as well, it's not just goals. He's dynamic, like I said, he's young, he puts himself about. He fits the Chelsea mould perfectly. Every Chelsea fan around world football would want Chelsea to sign Timo Werner. Although there is an already a very, very strong emotional bond with Tammy Abraham playing so well for Chelsea, even when he's not scoring, being an incredibly important integral part of the team, just like when Chelsea won away at Tottenham. Abraham had a couple of chances, but really he was working so hard for the team. He had Toby Alderweireld on toast. The Belgium just couldn't stop him. He ended up getting yellow carded and handling the ball. Um, added to the frustrated that saw the collapse of Tottenham in that game. And the Chelsea faithful constantly sung Tammy Abraham's name. So he is Chelsea's number nine. The Chelsea faithful's own, born and bred in Cobham in the academy, loves playing for Chelsea, is a good goal scorer, a superb player. I think just a year younger than Timo Werner. But what if Chelsea had two elite strikers? Timo Werner is certainly not coming to Chelsea to replace Giroud. And to be honest, Despite all the links, it's very difficult for me to see him coming to Chelsea in January regardless. Think about it. He's on to be the top scorer in the league. They're currently sitting at the top of the Bundesliga. He's having an amazing season in terms of individual form, much like Jadon Sancho. And why would you want to ruin something that's in a really good momentum? Surely wait until the summer. See if you can win as the season's top scorer and see if you can win the title. Why would you jeopardize all that? to come to a team like Chelsea that look like a fun and exciting project moving forwards, might pay you more money and obviously is quite prestigious, but that can wait. You know, win, you might, this might be your only chance to ever win a Bundesliga. So there's that. But also there's the release clause. Timo Werner did have a release clause in his contract for like 25 or 27 million, which is obviously crazily cheap. But Werner, knowing that he wanted to leave RB Leipzig, did sign a new contract with an agreement for the club to sort of let him go eventually and they had a look at said release clause. Although it's no longer the 25 to 27 million release clause reported, it's still reported not to be too crazy. Apparently Werner wanted to be able to leave if a club came along to trigger it that he wanted to go to. So we're talking maybe double slightly over, so maybe 50, 55 million, 60 million euros. I mean, let's be honest, if Timo Werner's release clause is 55 million euros, it's absolutely worth it. I know he's really young at 23 and he's having an amazing season, but he's been around for a couple of years now and he's demonstrated ability in German football for two or three years. He's showing that yet I'm not a one season wonder and I've absolutely exploded this season, entering my youthful prime in elite form. The kind of form that perhaps if he didn't have a release clause and he just signed a new contract and a big club came along, Leipzig might say 80 to 100 million euros please. See what I'm saying? So I'm not sure he'll come in January, obviously as a Chelsea fan I'd be delighted if he did because he's just a superb striker, another one to add to the squad and that can only be a good thing and add competition, healthy competition. I trust Frank Lampard's man management skill to make everyone feel valued within the squad. So watch this space, I'll of course keep you updated on football therapy. Right, next up, I just want to quickly touch on Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Even though Frank Lampard has been commenting on how they think the recovery of his injury has been a bit slower than expected, Ruben Loftus-Cheek's come out and said some really, really positive stuff. Obviously, he's been seen doing that training video, running about, doing drills, which is hugely positive. But he's been talking about feeling really, really good, running more and more and more, and he feels he's closer than ever to returning to the team. Now, if you know what Frank Lampard's like, you'll think, okay, well, it's probably not as close as Ruben thinks because Lampard wants his players to do an immense amount of running before they return into his team. Just look at Antonio Rudiger. He probably deemed himself fit long before Lampard reintroduced him into the squad to play, which is a good thing, I guess. He wants his players to be at an elite 
level of fitness before he puts them up against the opponent. And finally, I want to touch on it. I know it's silly, but Ethan Ampadu cut his hair off. I'm sure you've seen it online. Go check it out. If not, it's done by HD Cuts. He looks a little bit like Jaden Sancho, but it looks like he's mean and he means business. And it got me thinking about him, about what a good player he is and how I've watched him a bunch of times live. Actually, under uh, Conte and Sari, I saw him a few times. Super good youngster. I think he would absolutely have a place in Lampard's squad when he returns. Anyway, guys, quick reminder to you guys, please do subscribe to Yam Plays. I'll put the link in the top of the description. Support my other channel by going to check it out. Remember, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That is it from me, guys. So you lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.